This is Power Ground Boxing, but we're dedicated to the great sport of boxing. I need you to subscribe right now for another jab of boxing information and boxing news from around the world, commentary and entertainment with a focus on honoring those of the past and the present who have made a positive contribution to this great sport that we love and call boxing. This is Quick Jab, and man, I got a good one for you. Okay, so now listen, I am gonna talk about champ side. That's right. If you don't know, let me go ahead and tell you, let me go ahead and flash to it. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna talk about the champ side 2023 pound for pound rankings. Now, if you do not know who the champ side is, I don't know what you're doing with your boxing life. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, mad shouts out to my people, the champ side. Now listen, I do not know the champ side, never met him, never talked to him or nothing. I just respect his champ side grind. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now peep this though. So he just dropped a pound for pound ranking, right? And although I don't agree with the order of things, man, I got to respect the fact that he has built this list, how he built this list. And I think that it's a, I'm going to say a pretty um, respectable list. You got what I'm saying? I'm telling you, man, I was just looking at this list. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, man, you know, eh. I just, I thought about, you know, the skill set. I thought about just the charisma. I thought about the talent. I thought about the resume of these fighters. And man, I said, hey, this is a pretty excellent list. You got what I'm saying? So man, I just had to get on and talk about it. You got what I'm saying? We got on it baby nah it's for real though okay let me go ahead and flash to it again you know what I'm saying so right now he has and when I say he I mean the champ side champ side has Jamel Charlo as the number one pound for pound champion now I don't I didn't put Jamel Charlo my number one but we all know that you know he's in my top five but I don't disagree with this because listen, he he is not on peds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got a great skill set. He's been relatively active. Now I know that he did just break his um hand, so you know that hurts him. But I'm telling you, I still have him, even though he had broke his hand. You know, he was still uh, my number three. But I'm not mad at all that he is the number one because he just did heavy lifting in 154. He literally cleaned out the division. And now he is on a goal to defend as undisputed, making history and everything. Come on, man. Look, I have no problem with, with, with that number one at all. So undisputed, 154 champion, Jamel Charlo, the Iron Man. Come on, man. I man, I respect the fact that this individual by the name of Champside said, you know what? I'ma make my own assessment. And this is my number one. Man, come on. You can't hate on that number one at all. Cause look, the pound for pound, like he already said, is like a a a, a, a what if or a hypothetical ranking system of fighters who you know kind of dominate in the class regardless of their weight class you know if you didn't have that that analytical process of you know different ranking systems and pound for pound i mean um, weight classes you know i'm telling you i definitely agree with this doggone I'm saying I, I, I'm, I'm not mad at that at all. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so number two, he has Errol Spence. Now, Errol Spence Jr., if 
We are talking 147 and 147 only. He has went over, took, went overseas, took the belt, broke a face, came back to the States, took another belt, mauled, mauled poor. You know what I'm saying? Mauled him. You know what I'm saying? Like what I really admired and what I respect about Errol Spence going over to take Kell Brook is that he went overseas, broke Kell Brook face, and took the belt. You got what I'm saying? He outboxed Brook, and then he took the belt. He didn't leave it up to the judges. Okay, so now when he come back, he faced um, Porter, right? Now listen, when I'm talking and communicating, guess what? I am a human, so I may make some mistakes, but guess what? You get what I'm saying. Okay, so now you know and I know that Sean Porter, he's an individual that he's known for being a dog. That's what everybody always says about Sean Porter. They always say, oh man, he make it a rough fight. Oh, he a dog, he, he so gritty and grimy. So now when Errol Spence fought Sean Porter, what happened? Errol Spence out dog the dog. Everybody was saying, oh man, it's gonna be hard for Errol. Oh man, we I don't know if he can do it. I don't know if he can do it because Sean Porter, he a dirty fighter. He headbutt, he hit low, he hit you on the thighs, he hit you in the face, he hit you in the back of the head. People were saying all the craziest things about Sean Porter when they were saying that Errol Spence would possibly lose to Sean Porter. Errol Spence gets in the ring with Sean Porter, dominates, has the more accurate shots, has the more clean shots, and he was just mauling and just wrangling and, and really dusting it up with Sean Porter. When we know Sean Porter gonna come in there, he gonna get dusty with you. You understand what I'm saying? So I really like that he just outdogged the dog and it was a close fight, it was, because Spence fought Porter's fight because he was just letting it be known like, hey, oh, you think you a dog? Well, you can't out dog me because I got that dog in me. You feel me? And then he dropped Porter. And hey, <laughs> I think that was more than likely the determining factor. Now, some people like, you know, um, Porter was winning. No, he wasn't. It was close. But Errol Spence was dictating the whole fight. He was dictating that pace. Porter wasn't dictating the pace. Errol Spence was dictating the pace because Sean Porter was known to be that, that dog. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to outdog the dog, and that's what he did. You got what I'm saying? So, man, I'm just saying. Okay, so then Pacquiao beat Keith Thurman, right? And then... Errol Spence was supposed to fight Pacquiao. Errol Spence got an eye injury. So then Thurman stepped to the plate. I mean, not Thurman, sorry. Ugas stepped to the plate. And then he defeated Pacquiao. And then when Spence, after he healed up and all that, he went back and got Ugas out of there. He broke Ugas' face, broke his ribs. You got what I'm saying? So he took each and every belt by doing what no other person had been no we hadn't saw that done we never saw we didn't see him go nobody go overseas and break a face and bring a belt back and then come and see a, a live dog and say you know what yeah i like that dog right there but he ain't got more dog in him than me because that's what he did and he got porter out of there then Ugas coming off the best victory against the legend, Manny Pacquiao. He break Ugas' face. Come on, yo. Collecting these three belts. Man, I'm saying, this dude looking like Thanos out here in the 147 division. You know what I'm saying? He got almost all the stones. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm telling you, man. I, so, I, I don't... 
So when I'm looking at Errol Spence number two, okay. You know what I'm saying? Now he not my number, I mean, he's my number two as well. So now let's get to the number three. He got Terrence Crawford. Now, what I like about Terrence Crawford, 147. Okay, so then let's go down. You know what I'm saying? We saw what he did down there. Let's go down. We saw what he did down there. You got what I'm saying? Look, now for me, Terrence Crawford last year was my number one pound for pound. But the reason why he was my number one pound for pound, and uh, I'm telling y'all, I'm always fighting with myself, um, with Spence and Crawford. Yeah, I'm always fighting with myself. Like, nah, this week, Crawford number one. This week, Smith's number one. I'm always fighting with myself. If I can put both of them as my number one, then I'm just going to be like, ah, both of them my number one. Okay, so then the reason why Crawford is my number one um, last year is because he conquered at the, at the lower weight division, right? And then he moved up in weight, which is semi-unheard of. He moved up in weight, and then he keep knocking people out. That's kind of unheard of, man. You don't, most of the times, people power don't transfer up. So his power has gotten better, and he keeps knocking people out, whether they get a KO or a TKO. So when I'm looking at his whole body of work at another weight class, and then at another weight class, and then I see him move up, and become a WBO champion at 147. And then I see him fight this guy after this guy, after this ex-champion, after this guy, after this ex-champion. And then he knocking him out. I got to be like, man, hmm. Woo. I think that's my number one guy. You got what I'm saying? Like, if I, because, you know, like champs, I said, the, the pound for pound is like a hypothetical type of list. You got what I'm saying? So when I'm looking at a guy go up different weight classes i'm like yo um and then he's knocking people out at the latest weight class that he in i gotta be like man come on i gotta look at him like whoa wow come on you know what i'm saying now of course crawford gets a lot of flack he just defeated by knockout of course um david advancing now <sighs> people are calling at a glove gate because his glove busted and you know, all, he got all kind of controversy with that. But, you know, like I said, the reason why he 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 always teeters on my number one, and he's my number one most of the times, is because of what he did at other weight classes. And then he keep transferring up, and then he keep just performing in an exceptional manner. Come on, man. You got to love that. You got what I'm saying? Come on. You got to love Terrence Budcroft. Come on. Woo, I'm just saying, man. So... So champ side, you know, so let me go back to the list. You know what I'm saying? Look, so this list, you know, I can't argue with this, man. Jamel Charlo, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. He has our, his top three and my top three. They are definitely the same people. However, in different juxtaposed rankings. You got what I'm saying? Cause like sometimes I have Errol number one. Most of the times, I'll have Terrence Crawford as my number one, Errol Spence is my number two, and then Jamel Charlo is my number three. You know, I was just talking about that last year on another video. Hey, please look for it. You got what I'm saying? So I'm just like, man, come on, man. This is this is awesome right here. You got what I'm saying? This is an awesome list. Now, I'm not saying that it's an awesome list just because that just because of this it, he. Just because Champ Side and, and me have the same people in um, our top three, man, I'm really saying that because I was like, great minds think alike. So guess what? That boy must be a genius. Holla at your people. <laughs> nah, but okay, let's go back to the list. Okay, so now he has his number four as the undisputed lightweight champion, Devin the Dream Haney. Oh my God. Listen, look, I keep talking about Devin Haney and talking about Devin Haney. And the reason why I keep talking about Devin Haney is because you don't know anyone in the four belt era and you probably can't name one fighter who against all odds, everyone tried to box Devin Haney out. They try to keep, they try to play keep away. They try to play keep away from Devin Haney. 
Devin Haney has consistently said he wants to fight the biggest and the baddest people in the sport. He said, line them up. He going to take care of them. He'll outbox them all day, every day. He's been trying to make all the fights in every single one. Teofimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia, all the people that you think so great and you always giving praise to, um, um, Lomachenko, you know what I'm saying? Tank Davis, he keep trying to make all of the fights. He keep ducking no smoke. That's what he keeps saying. Yeah, I ain't trying to duck no smoke. I want to fight everybody. And he is showing you how it's supposed to be done. And in this lightweight division right now, Devin Haney is moving honorably. He is moving honorably. He did everything that he said he was going to do. And he's doing it with style. He's doing it with grace. You understand what I'm saying? Like, how can you hate on this man? This man is really doing what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I respect, man, I respect Devin Haney, man, because I'm telling you. Like, and then Devin Haney Promotions, which is ran by Bill Haney, his company doing good business, right? And then he's moving honorably. When he when he speaks, he is re really concise, articulate, and real precise with what he's saying. He's concise and precise with what he's saying. So the whole team Haney, I feel like they are moving how you're supposed to move when you are taking boxing serious. You got what I'm saying? You don't see no craziness that's surrounding Devin Haney. He don't got all the drama and just all the things that you don't want your young champions to look up to. Look, these young champions in the amateurs right now who just won golden gloves and they just starting off their amateur or their professional career, you can look at Devin the Dream Haney and say, you know what? I want to be like that guy right there. You can look at the relationship that his father has with him and you say, wow, I want to have that type of relationship if I'm a father-son boxing duo. You got what I'm saying? Like, on every level... Okay, so now that's just them on that professional level. Okay, so now, like I said, he fight everybody. He's been asking for all the smoke. Who want it? Who want it? Trying to fight everybody. Look, how can you hate that? Come on, my God. And then, when it's finally put to the test, everyone, almost everyone was saying that Devin Haney was going to lose to George Cambosos because... And I was concerned because he was flying to Australia. You know what I'm saying? He was flying to the land down under to fight George Cambosos in his own hometown. And when I tell you Devin Haney put paws on George Cambosos, look, he was the cleaner fighter. He landed the most effective punches. He landed the, the more cleaner, crisp shots. He just looked as if he didn't fight all of the rounds that he was actually fighting. You understand what I'm like? He was looking so clean and vibrant in there. He looked like he could have went 10 more rounds. That's how good he was looking. Now, this is round two. I mean, round one. So then, Devin and Dream Haney goes back to the United States. And then, he doesn't get their love and the re receive the adoration of the United States citizens after he has broke history. He made history by coming, becoming undisputed. The youngest undisputed, real undisputed, all the belts, he's Thanos. You understand what I'm saying? He became Thanos. You got what I'm saying? So now he did not receive the love that he should have gotten in the United States. They just, I don't know, it's just something about fight certain fighters man they just do not get the love that they deserve now when i say certain fighters this is what i mean i mean it seems as if the fighters that look like this do not get the love that they deserve because i remember when another um guy named canelo alvarez i remember when he got became undisputed and whoa the world went crazy they was like ah! you got what i'm saying they were just crazy but like i say i understand that he has a certain fan base that just goes crazy and they have loyalty and they back him regardless of what he do and regardless of who he fight and i respect the fact that canelo he's mexican right and he's loved by his mexican fan base 
Now, he has fans that are not Mexican as well, but he's loved and admired by his Mexican fan base. They they erect statues of him. They show him love, and they never show disloyalty. You got what I'm saying? Message. So anyway, you know what I'm saying? That's But enough about Can Canelo, you know what I'm saying? He's not on the pound for pound list. And the reason why he's not on the pound for pound list is because he has used performance enhancement drugs in the pound for pound list. Hypothe this hypothetical list, it shouldn't have like heavyweights up there and it shouldn't have people who have used performance enhancement drugs. You got what I'm saying? That's just my thinking. I see that's champ size thinking as well. So I salute that type of thinking. You got what I'm saying? But listen, Devin Haney, he didn't receive the, the, the love in America. You know what I'm saying? After the first fight, he came back. Some people was like giving him a thumbs up, but he still wasn't on the pound for pound listing or nothing. Like I'm telling when I tell you all media and all these people in media, I'm telling they just disgraceful sometimes with how they treat Devin Haney. And I'm telling you, I'm just so disgusted. And while we at it, Jamel Charlo, they treat him bad. They just, I'm telling you, man, it's like it, it seems as if the people in America do not view Jamel Charlo or Devin Haney as American because they do not get any type of love and support. But we talking about Devin Haney right now. But like I said, um, Devin Haney, he didn't get the love after he became the youngest undisputed lightweight. You know what I'm saying? And the youngest, the unifying, well, I want to say like 30 years. Man, shouts out to Pernell Whitaker, rest in power, King. You got what I'm saying? A boxing king right there. And man, Pernell was a boxing fool. But whoo, you got to love Sweet Pea. But anyway, like I said, Devin Haney after the first uh, match with Cambosos, when, which he dominated, America didn't show him no love. They just didn't, man. ESPN didn't show him no love. Nothing. It was just, it's really a sad face. It makes me kind of mad. But, you know, I understand that, you know, that's just, it's so many, so much un, inequality in America, you know. Okay, so now, Devin Haney, he wins the first time. People are disrespectful. Don't show him no love. So then what does Devin Haney do? He goes back to the land down under and then he ferociously decomposes ferocious George Cambosos. I'm telling you, he dismantled and he did it in dominant fashion and he did it in a different way. He used two different styles to defeat George the Emperor Cambosos. He made it look so easy. I'm telling you, man, I was like, oh my God. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. Now, I knew he was going to win. I felt strongly confident that he would win, you know, especially after he had won that decision that first time in Australia because he just, he made it so one-sided that you just could it was undeniable. But this time, he sat down on his punches just a little bit more. And man, he bloodied up George Cambosos. He marked up his face. Even in the first fight, he, he marked up his face. But he bloodied up George Cambosos. He made George Cambosos miss. And now what was crazy is that ESPN, they was hating on Haney so much. They had something called the, um, what, what was they call it? The, the, they was counting how many times Devin Haney clinched. When they first started, I'm talking about for, um, <laughs> look, the second time Devin Haney fought George Cambosos, at, during the time when they first started the matches, right? They was talking about Devin Haney. Well, in the first match, he clinched 15 times. You got what I'm saying? This is what they were saying, right? So then, in fight number two, guess who was doing all the clinching? George Cambosos. You got what I'm saying? Look, Devin Haney was sitting down just a little bit on his punches, and he was busting George Cambosos' face up. Oh, my God. It was like, oh, my goodness. So then he just shut. So ESPN, they was doing the commentating. They had to just, they couldn't say nothing. They had to stop talking about all of that. You got what I'm saying? Because he was busting them up. He just made it look so one-sided. And then, like I said, he was sitting down on his punches. He was just looking phenomenal. He was just looking like that young dog, the young champion, the undisputed. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, he successfully defended those lightweight straps. And he came back to America. And guess what? 
America still don't show Devin Haney no love. But, man, I'm telling you, we love that boy. Power Ground Boxing want to let you know Devin and Dream Haney, you are the truth. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about the truth like Errol Spence, the truth, though. You know what I'm saying? Man, shout out to the truth, Errol Spence. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like the truth as in you just show an excellent display of a boxing exhibition. <laughs> Do you feel me? Oh, my goodness. I just had to let that be known because I'm telling you, Devin Haney, he just does not get the props that he deserves. He he taking all the chances. And then what's crazy is now, after he come back to America, do, does not get the love that he should have got the second time after he defeated. He didn't get it the first time. Didn't get it. Then, everybody, sh Loma, he they still had Loma in the top 10. So then, he, Loma fights Ortiz. Does not look good against Ortiz, but still. Devin Haney gets into the ring and says, hey, man, I'm going to show you how great I am. That's what basically what he told Lomachenko, man. I'm going to show you how great I am. Let's get it on. Like, when have you known an undisputed champion to be chasing other people? I'm telling you, man, Devin Haney is just, man, okay, let's, okay, let, let's move on, man. Good gracious. I'm just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I know you like, man, this guy is Craig Z. Yes, I am, man. I'm telling you, though, but Devin Haney, he has done an excellent job of just being a champion, man. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so now, now we know that Shakur Stevenson, he, uh, Champs Eye List got Shakur Stevenson at number five. Now, I don't disagree with having Shakur Stevenson at number five. I don't disagree with having Tank, uh, Javante Tank Davis at uh, number six. Now, what I will say about um, Shakur Stevenson is that Shakur Stevenson, he is just such an excellent boxer. You got what I'm saying? Now, he gets a lot of hate too because I'm telling you, it seems as if some people who do not appreciate the sport of boxing, they want to see Rock'em Sock'em Robot style hitting against each other you know what I'm saying? it's like they like they think that boxing is like a bare knuckle contest when it's not you know what i'm saying you should put the get the the whole goal is to hit and not get hit swim without getting wet that's the whole objective you got what i'm saying to be strategic to be tactical to understand where you are in the ring to understand what time it is to understand how to work your game plan and if your game plan is not working, how to adjust that game plan right on the fly in the moment, landing the more precise shots with precision. I'm just saying like, this is just, he, some people just, I don't know. It seems like they don't respect the sweet science of boxing. You got what I'm saying? Okay, so anyway, back to this list right here. Okay, so now with Shakur Stevenson, I don't disagree with that number five. I, I like it. You know what I'm saying? I, I like it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so now Javante Tank Davis, come on now. Come on now. We we know Javante is, he's just the guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's just the guy that that is just, he doing what you supposed to do as a champion. You got what I'm saying? He's just continuing to be dominant, even though he keep going through all kind of difficulties in his life he deal with different adversity but he always bouncing back you don't see him out here being like just excessively um negative sometimes he gets some criticism for being kind of negative you know what i'm saying but you know that's just how it is and where he come from he grew up hard and he grew you know what I'm saying? that's just how it is you know what i mean so i really respect the fact that he is just focused you know i'm hoping that he does a great job against Hector Garcia, I don't think that's going to be a, a warm-up fight. I don't think that's going to be a walk through the park at all because he's getting ready to fight Hector Garcia. I think that's going to be um, really a, a, a trying situation. You got what I'm saying? Because I think Hector Garcia is really playing no games. But listen, I got to remind you to go to powergrind.com. You know what I'm saying? Powergrindboxing.com. Look, we donate free boxing equipment. So if you got an organization that needs boxing equipment then please feel free to get in contact with us make sure that you hit this like button subscribe to all of all our social media 
You can even reach out to me on Instagram, Power Ground Boxing. We are Power Ground Boxing everywhere, so be on the lookout for us for real. You get what I'm saying? Had to give that plug right there. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But yeah, Javante Tank Davis, I think he's the he's just the man. That's just how it is. You know, he's the he's the big earner. And the reason why he's the big earner, because hey, guess what? He got something that I call a great piggyback. Floyd Money Mayweather put Javante Tank on his back and he walked him ahead of the line. No one knew who Javante Tank Davis was for the most part in the boxing world. And Floyd said, you know what? Hey, I'm going to take this kid. I'm going to make him a millionaire. I'm going to make him a champion. And I'm, the world's going to know his name. You got what I'm saying? And mad shouts out to Floyd Money Mayweather because he did that. You got what I'm saying? And now the whole world recognizes Javante Tank Davis. You got what I'm saying? That's just how it is. That's how it's going to be. And hey, <laughs> let's move on. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so now he got Stephen Fulton. Oh. Oh man, <laughs> oh man, so many people are gonna be mad at that one. Now, the reason why I agree with this is, you know, and, and what kills me is we have seen Stephen Fulton Jr. now, we've seen him move up in weight. We've seen him do different things at different, um, different weights, right? Now, this is excellent. Now, there's another person by the name of Monster Inaway I'm hearing that Monster in a way is going to move up to fight Stephen Fulton Jr. Now, if Monster in a way can defeat Stephen Fulton Jr. and we know that Stephen Fulton Jr. is that guy, then I know that Monster in a way will make the pound for pound rankings you understand what i'm saying okay so let's go to number eight dimitri bivel oh my god listen like i said i cannot disagree with that either and the reason why i can't disagree with that is because bivel he is showing you hey hey he can box now when i first saw um bivel against canelo i thought that it was gonna when i was looking at bivel box i said man he looks like he's a straight boxer. You got what I'm saying? I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if Canelo is gonna be. I think this is maybe a cherry pick going wrong because I don't think uh, Canelo is gonna be able to beat Dimitri Bivol. I was telling my friends that. I was telling that to my brother. You know what I'm saying? My brother was like, man, I don't know. I'm like, bro. So I just, I showed him a, a tape of or a video of Bivol, and I'm like, look, you know what I'm saying? We just talking about different boxing techniques, and I'm like, look, this is what he's doing, this, this, this. I'm like, man, I think it's gonna be hard. I don't think Canelo is gonna be able to do that. You think he's gonna get tired, and et cetera, et cetera, you know? Cause that's just how it is, you know? And then he's like, yeah, that might be right. And then everything that I said, he outboxed, and he just, he just did everything better on every single level than Canelo Alvarez, and it kinda, kinda catapulted Bivol stock. You got what I'm saying? So I really appreciate the fact that somebody is recognizing. Now he's on my top 10 as well. You know what I'm saying? But I, I like that he was in that top 10. I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense right there. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, Arthur better be. Listen, man, you see all these belts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see all these better be belts, right? Okay, you see the better be belts. So now I'm hoping that better be and Bivol, they gonna fight it out. I don't know who's gonna be undisputed, but man, whoever is undisputed. Now listen, um, I think, yeah, I'm almost certain that Bivol is younger. I like his boxing style. Better be is older, of course. But what I will say is that Better be is a tough, technically sound fighter. Now, I do see a couple of mistakes that he made. But man, it's easy to, this is what I noticed. <laughs> this is what I noticed about boxing, man. It's so easy to see mistakes when you're on the outside, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, look at it. But when you actually get in the ring, man, it's so difficult. It's difficult trying to figure out and work your game plan. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's very, very difficult. Trust me, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Four days a week. And it's it's difficult trying to work your game plan when the guy that you're fighting is not cooperating. You know what I'm saying? He's just not cooperating. Especially when you're sparring. And then you got like eight different people telling him 
how to adjust to what you're doing. You know, what I'm saying? so you constantly got to be adjusting. Oh man, it's, just, it's a headache. You know. What I'm <laughs> okay, let's get back to the list. Okay, so now he has for number ten, which I definitely cannot. Um, I cannot be angry at that either. You know what I'm saying? He has Jerron Boots Ennis. Now this 147 pounder, man, he is looking massively impressive. He looks like he is the next to be the, the star in the 147 pound division. He has already proclaimed that he won't smoke at 147 with everybody. It does not matter. You got what I'm saying? He said it don't matter. He said he won't Terrence Bud Crawford. He, it seems like he don't think that Bud will fight him. He wants Errol Spence Jr. He said that he believes that Errol Spence Jr. will fight him. I'm telling you, Jer Jerron Ennis Boots is really a trailblazer right now. He is. He got everybody looking at him like, whoa, that guy might be something special. You got what I'm saying now? He, gets, he got two knocks against him. The two knocks that I see against with, with Jerron Boots Ennis is that people are not, you know, they're not talking about how, they're not clamoring about Jerron Boots Ennis like being a pay-per-view star. He doesn't have the promotion and marketing dollars put behind him where he's just a household name where people are like, you know what? I want to fight that guy right there or, oh, I really like that guy. I'm going to buy a ticket to see that guy fight. You got what I'm saying? Now, the reason why that's the biggest Achilles heel is because everybody know, even Bozzy Ennis, he said, look, man, it's a high risk and low reward for all these top guys. Look, yeah, they can, well, I'm going to fight you and give you this big opportunity when I'm going to be selling all the tickets because the people are, don't really know you like that. You know what I'm saying? Because boxing is definitely a business first. You got what I'm saying? That's just how it is, you know? And... He just has, he's he's younger. You know what I'm saying? He looks stronger. He he looked faster at different times. He's more athletic. He's a switch hitter. I'm just saying, like, it's like he is, you know, when they talk about Terrence Crawford, right? One of the things, especially when they talk about Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, the fight that just did not happen at welterweight, um, the disappointing fight that didn't happen. They always say that, oh, Crawford is a switch hitter. Crawford is a switch hitter. You know, he switch stances. You know, he can fight, you know, orthodox. He can fight southpaw, et cetera, right? Now, Boots can do the same. You got what I'm saying? So now he bigger. He's naturally stronger, naturally bigger. He can do everything. He, he's younger. You got what I'm saying? Like, he has all the talents. Now, when you put, that's when you put, that's why people are saying that Boots beats Crawford. Now, and you know, they say that Crawford is more athletic than Boots. Some people are saying that, you know, and some people are saying that, you know, Crawford got the experience, so he'll probably win. Now with Boots and Errol Spence, people are saying that, look, Boots is good, but what we have seen with Errol Spence is that his work rate is phenomenal. His work rate is completely phenomenal. You got what I'm saying? I'm just saying, it's, that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? He is a heavy grinder. He's going to grind his opponent down. That's what he does. He grinds you down. He slows you down. Ask Sean Porter. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ask your Dennis Ugas. I'm just saying. Ask Danny Garcia. Ask Kel Brook. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, he grinds his opponents down. He put them in the grinder. And, man, when he puts you in the grinder, it's very difficult to get out of that because he's kind of a juggernaut in 147. Now, that's just how it is. So so that's the reason why, you know, people are like, yes, Boots, we love you, but we don't want to see you fighting Spence. We don't want to see you fight Crawford, et cetera. You know, we feel like he'll demolish Thurman, or some people do. You know what I'm saying? So it's so so controversial, you know what I'm saying? But I I don't have a problem with him being on number 10. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just don't, you know what I'm saying? So all in all, I really like Champ Side's um, pound-for-pound pound listings and... 
I can make it make sense in my mind. I do see some honorable mentions, but you know, it's just a top 10, you know what I'm saying? So I understand why some individuals were not up there, but I'm telling you, I really enjoy, I really enjoy talking about Champ Side's um, top 10 and go subscribe to the Champ Side. Um, I think his tagline is the baddest brand in the land. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man, I'm trying to be like you, baby. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Well, I ain't trying to be the, the baddest brand. I'm trying to be the most powerful brand. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Because we just dedicated to the full-time grind. You know what I'm saying? Now, so mad shouts out to Champ Side. You know what I'm saying? I like that um, pound for pound list. You know, so I had to get on. As soon as I saw it, I was like, ooh, I'm going to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? And it's a way to, to give another boxing channel love you know what i'm saying like because man these boxing channels i'm noticing man they they don't show you love and they be hating on each other sometimes i'll be like man what in the world what did this person do to you you know so they be having crazy nicknames for these box certain boxing channels be having crazy nicknames for other boxing channels and since i'm you know new to this youtube space I don't be knowing that, you know, people got boxing beef on YouTube and stuff like that. So when people say, I don't even know what they talking about, I'm like, what, who is that? And then I eventually find out through reading comments or whatever that they talking about this person on the boxing channel. I'm like, oh my God, these people crazy. I'm like, man, is this the sixth grade? The people 13 years old, 14 years old. Like, man, this is too childish right there. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? We just live in a time where everybody is competing and they don't want to show love, but I don't want to be like that. You got what I'm saying? I didn't create this channel to do that. You got what I'm saying? So I'm definitely going to be consistently showing love to boxing greats and ev every individual who has a positive contribution to this great sport of boxing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this is Power Ground Boxing, courtesy of Power Ground Sports, talking about the biggest names in sports and entertainment. Listen, stay fight ready and stay on the grind. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Tell a friend to tell a friend about Power Ground Boxing because I'm saying we trying to drop bangers. You got what I'm saying? Look, man, stay on the grind. I'm out of here. Peace.